Hello, my name is Sandu Baciu and uh, welcome to a new episode of uh, Camera Collection. Today we'll uh, talk about something very interesting. Uh, we're going to talk about TLRs, basically film cameras, and how we can uh, take a digital picture using a film camera, a TLR. Is that possible? Yes, it is. And I'll show you how. So, uh, what you need for uh, this experiment, you need a Raspberry Pi and a camera module. This camera module uh, is actually 5 megapixel, so have those both. And of course you need uh, a TLR, in this case I'm using a Yashica. And you also need an iPhone or an iPad and an application which is on the iPhone and that application is called uh, Medicam. Of course for uh, other systems you can, uh, you can use different applications. What you need is basically remotely accessing the Raspberry Pi camera model with any other devices on any other system operation. Uh, on top of all those things you know, you need to have also recommended uh, Wi-Fi for Raspberry Pi and a lot of patience. But I can uh, told you for sure it's going to work. So I will show you how. Okay. I just uh, make a quick sketch and I can show you it's actually this one here. And I will explain how the assemble needs to be performed so you can do your Raspberry Pi digital back. How we can make a film camera to take digital pictures. So here is the principle. I just uh, made a quick uh, drawing here. So basically we have the TLR camera like this, which is a film camera. We have the taking lens here and the viewing lens here. Basically you look from the top and through the viewing lens you see what you like to make a picture and the taking lens they are taking the picture itself as long as you use a film uh, behind. Um, so here are the modifications which we're gonna do. For the TLR camera basically we're gonna use the taking lens by putting a screen, a magnifier screen I call it, and that is gonna be attached right on the film plane. So basically when we're gonna be in focus, when we're gonna look from the top, the image is gonna appear also on the magnifier screen, reverse it, that means upside down. Uh, on top of that, we're gonna use a Raspberry Pi. As you can see here, I use a Raspberry Pi B+, plus because I got the for uh, uh, USB, but right now Raspberry Pi also just produced the Raspberry Pi 2, also with two USB. Doesn't really matter, any Raspberry Pi will work. And on top of that, we need to have the camera module. Uh, basically a camera, the camera which Raspberry Pi is uh, compatible with uh, is actually five megapixel and uh, you can use that camera as well. So basically we're gonna have uh, a mini computer which can take a picture of the image which is reflected on the magnifier screen. In order to have um, that in focus, still we need to use a macro lens. Basically, the camera is going to stay here, and with the macro lens, we'll make a picture of the image which is behind the magnifier screen. So, so how those uh, things works? Well, it's uh, not so complicated. You have the Raspberry Pi. You install the camera model. You're gonna need to make sure when you put the camera, you put it on reverse. When you have these things on top, this is the right way to do a picture. But in this particular case, when we want to have it in reverse, we're just gonna flip it in this way. So basically, we'll take the module, we put the camera here, and I just need to make sure I will put my camera back here and the image which is coming through the lens, which I wanted to capture it because this is what I'm looking for, is going to be reflected on the back. I have the screen 
and I need to place the camera to be able to make a picture of that screen. Let's start with the Raspberry Pi itself. So uh, you can use any, any model, could be Raspberry Pi Type A, could be Raspberry Pi Type B, B+, in this particular case I have a B plus model, but of course we can use even the latest one which is uh, Pi 2. Uh, on top of this of course you need to have the Raspberry Pi module. Uh, those are sold separately, this one is around 35 bucks, almost the same price for the camera, 35 bucks as well. So what else you need? Well, on the back of the TLR, which you needed of course, the camera, uh, what is important is actually the lens to be in good shape. Uh, if the shutter doesn't work, it's not really a big problem. Uh, make sure you can access it to the uh, B, the bulb uh, mode. And what we want is actually to have the lenses fully open. On the back, as I said before, you need to put a screen which is actually reflecting the image which is coming through the lens. And of course it will be inverted. Um, it's extremely important to have a good one. Uh, if you want to do something cheap, oh, I have this one, basically it's a piece of plastic, just cut it. has to be able to be grainy and has to be, as you can see, semi-transparent. Uh, that works, at least works for me. Uh, regarding the back itself, I just built by cardboard a little bit uh, of uh, dark room, which is going to be applied on the back of the camera. Uh, Alright, uh, you don't see me on the screen but uh, I want to talk about the back of the TLR um, basically about the reflection screen uh, as you can see I just took that piece of pl plastic and uh, I just tape it with scotch behind and basically the image is reflected inverted on the back of the TLR so uh, the whole principle is to make a picture of this reflection. Uh, advantage is I'm using cameras, lenses, to have a soft focus or a very nice image. And I will just make a picture of this image using a Raspberry Pi camera. All right, let's see the Raspberry Pi in action now. So basically, I have the setup here, the camera with the digital back and the Raspberry Pi camera on the back. And right now I just start running the Raspberry Pi configuration. Okay, nothing changed here as usually. Login as Pi and the password. Classical. Uh, what usually I'm doing. Uh, um, I prefer to go on StarTex um, to have the classical screen and here I usually open the terminal and because I'm uh, using the Berry Cam very cam needs to be on the same configuration as on the same Wi-Fi as that one which I'm using. So we go to the same network. And I have the IP address and the same IP address, I need to have it on the Raspberry Pi. And after that, here on the terminal, we're going to run the script for Berica. So, 
that is python bericam.py and the app at the end the to run it on the background the symbol at yeah so let's see bericam right now is listening on the port 8000 so I'll just show you my phone too basically that's the app here bericam and we're gonna make the sync so the same network is used under my name Sandu and also on the iPhone I have the same network so let's take the picture and it's connected I just have a picture on the back and it's loaded right now on my iPhone As you can see, it took a picture. Alright, we have the camera sync with uh, the iPhone. So basically what I did with this camera, I have the digital back and the Raspberry Pi behind. And I prepare a test picture here. Basically two cameras on top of one of the books, or actually two books with Churchill. And let's see if that works. I will quickly prepare the capture. It's connecting. And as you can see, I got a picture over there. And the camera is capturing the picture. There it is. That's the picture. Take it with. Uh, Raspberry Pi using a film camera yeah she got the alarm and the Raspberry Pi itself on the computer and this is our test picture it works hope you like it thanks finally I like to talk about some advantages and disadvantages of uh, using a film camera to making digital pictures some of the advantages, as already said, you use a film camera to make a digital picture. I think that's an advantage in the sense that a really old camera can be used to make digital pictures. Uh, this principle can be applied for any camera. Uh, you can take an old one and you can put the Raspberry Pi inside. Uh, usually the old cameras do not have uh, complex lenses, so that can be even replaced. But, um, on uh, the TLR side, the, the most the biggest advantage is you can use the taken lens and with the reflection which you have it on the back, you basically have a nice picture. So I guess that is an advantage. Uh, the other advantage, of course, it's a learning process. Uh, it's fun and uh, you can teach the kids and uh, you can teach basically anybody how to be creative and reuse some of the things which many times they are disregarded, they are considered as garbage. So uh, in this particular case, if you have an old camera which nobody uses it, ideal you should use it for the film if it's still working. But if you have some uh, problem with the camera in the sense that the shutter is not working or there are some mechanical issues, still you can use the camera, at least the lens part of it, the lens mechanism and the focusing and you can make nice pictures. On the disadvantages side, of course, uh, when we do the pictures, uh, the picture quality is extremely important. So, uh, so far I have some of the pictures that are nice. I have made pictures which are nice, but uh, uh, so far they are not having a very high quality in the sense that it's still a picture made it to a screen and depending what screen you are using uh, if uh, there are some dust particle on it or if it's uh, a piece of plastic like I, as I'm using the grain uh, is still shown on, on a new picture so on the quality side I think uh, you are very dependent on uh, the quality of the material which you are using so 
that that definitely is a, is a disadvantage. The second thing, also from a quality point of view, because I'm using only the bulb, so basically the shutter is always always open, and I'm not using the film camera shutter. Uh, the vignetting is still up here. Well, the vignetting that means the corners are getting darker, so uh, you need to use uh, another software to process the image post uh, uh, after you take the picture, basically. So. That requires to be more work after you take the picture. You cannot use it as is. However, for uh, who is interested, uh, I tried um, also to use the synchronization between the shutter speed and the Raspberry Pi. Sometimes works. Uh, basically, use the flash and uh, you know all those old cameras, uh, even if they are, even if they are from fifties. Uh, uh, they have uh, a synchronization module and for instance for this one is on the side here and the modern ones also they have it uh, uh, on the top here so uh, you can use this flash sync just to send the input to Raspberry Pi so basically the flash is going toward the uh, Raspberry Pi and that is gonna trigger the action of taking the uh, picture with uh, Benny Cam. Um, and of course manually you can match whatever shutter speed you use here, you can match it on the other software as well. Uh, sometimes that works, sometimes it's not working, especially at the high speed. Uh, that I think is mostly because um, the Raspberry Pi is slow and uh, also it's got some uh, delays. So, uh, in theory it can be done, but uh, so far the results are not as uh, I like to have it. Um, another small disadvantage, of course, uh, from portable point of view, you can easily have a battery and things like that. And if you want to spend a little bit more, of course, uh, instead of having some cardboard and uh, uh, something very uh, basic of course you can make a 3d print and uh, you can uh, make it a little bit more professional um, the macro lenses which I use to make the picture of the screen uh, they are usually used for uh, different uh, phones uh, you know macro macro lenses for the iPhones for example um, however I think uh, the macro lens is not quite the right answer for this particular uh, experiment.